doing this because you have to do it. Ever since I was two years old, my hands have been itchy. I used to tell my mother that, that my hands were itchy and she would get the crayons out or the scissors. I have a memory that goes back to when I was two. I can remember my third birthday and I remember my pictures. And one thing I remember in kindergarten, nursery school, I was three. And I went, we were, lived in Key West, and I went to a Reynolds Street Nursery School, which was a WPA project to, for the children of the island. And one time, Dr. John Dewey came to visit. He was an educational philosopher. He's the one who emphasized experience. Children learn by experience, not just by rote learning. So he came to visit. He was vacationing, I guess and he wanted to meet the child who did the curious drawings. Well, the curious drawings that he's talking about were pictures I had drawn. They were people floating in air, and from their navels came long strings. And some were just floating with these strings all tangled in the air. Some of the strings went down below the earth to the center of the earth where the devil was, and he had a big turnstile, and he were cranking the strings <laughs> and some of the strings he would cut and the people could float to heaven. This was quite a few drawings and some of them he would crank until he pulled the people down to hell. <laughs> These were the curious drawings that John Dewey wanted to know who did them. I don't think I've ever done one thing and that was it. Ideas are too big to just have one image, even when I was little. I think from the time I was three on, I thought of myself as an artist. I never thought I will be an artist someday. That was never a concept for me. I was an artist. And I think other than the few times when life has been rough and you kind of waver, I don't think there's ever been a question in my mind that that wasn't what defined me or who I was. I don't feel I'm an artist unless I'm making art. And those have been very difficult times to have to define yourself. Who are you if you're not an artist? on these other things, but that isn't what defines me, the core. I remember when I was a senior in high school, we were to put our, what we wanted to be for the yearbook. I put artist. Someone changed it to art teacher, and when I complained, they said, being an artist is not acceptable. It's not reputable. And so my yearbook says I wanted to be an art teacher, which was I became an art teacher, but that was because I had to support a child. When I was a freshman in college, toward the end of the year, a professor came up and said, you're pretty good for a woman. The women were in one category and the serious, and it wasn't until I was in my 30s that I discovered all the women painters that had been kind of written out of the history of art, you know, when the women's movement started and you discovered that there were women right alongside, they just had been written out of the books. So it was very much a factor. That's why I used to use the name Piper. And when I was married, my last name was Zinner, so I signed work Piper Zinner because it was generic and it didn't say whether I was a male or female. I also began a series that I called the Elegy Series, which was about loss. It was about the two babies I had lost. I had two sons, infant sons. And of course, I had just lost my children and my house and my husband and car and everything. And I was living in my studio. So life was just in turmoil. And so I was finally 
putting all those feelings into this series that turn out when I look at them now, they are an absolute documentary of the stages of grief. At the time, I didn't even know there were stages of grief, but these go through systematically. And they start for the first year, it was all black and white work. And then with color added, and I can show you some of those pieces. I still find that some of the darkest pieces I still think are some of the best. Window is transition. Window as something you can go through. Window is something that cuts you off. Window is something that brings something in or takes something away. This is one of the final elegy pieces, a window. This was Aaron's elegy. And some of the bones are things from his ashes, and some were little wild bones from the desert. I think in all our lives, we can't change our losses, and we've all had them. You have to, if not embrace them, at least accept them and not be devastated by them because life has to go on. This is a large piece based on studies that were 12 inches square. And my, I did the color studies just to play with color. And the idea of the big one was to take those little studies and keep their freshness, keep their simplicity, and just do them bigger. So what was a one inch brush on the little one became a six inch brush. Economy of line is really important when you're trying to paint big but simple and not too much overpainting, trying to get it right the first time. And if it does have overpainting, to make that very deliberate over overpainting. So at one point there was to be a series of these big ones which would have gone around a room. Again, time and cost prohibited that. No matter how simple I tried to keep it, it got more detail as it got bigger because it's the space is there to put it in. You can give the, the hints of space. You can give references that push the space back, which you can't do easily in the little ones without having it look rather artificial. Again, this is a desert piece. Like much of my work is based on the desert. When I first came out here, I thought I would be painting ocean, and I did paint at OB for a while. But I wasn't nearly as drawn to ocean as I was to desert. This, the timelessness of the desert just resonates to me, and the vastness. I love feeling that small in the grander scheme of things. And then there's just a haunting beauty in the desert, the dryness, the color in the desert, particularly the dry summer desert, I think is exquisite. I think it gets kind of garish when it greens out. And while I painted the flowering desert a lot, I really like the bare bones of the earth of the winter desert, the fall desert, where there's nothing between you and the real form of earth and root and tree trunk. Yes, I'm greatly drawn to the desert, and it's, <laughs> it's a real poison to me with my skin cancer and other cancers. But I do go out, I used to go out once a week, and at least once a week and paint. And I can show you the diptychs that came from that. I learned to paint very quickly and wear lots of sunblock and get out of the sun with an hour and have about an hour to paint. But it's worth the drive out there just for that hour of sheer wonder at looking at something so timeless that's going to be there in all its changes and all its erosions, but it's going to be there in some form for how long, you know, it's, 
it's a pretty amazing space. Are we mostly talking about Borrego or have you just been all around? Borrego is unique because Borrego has water, there's still some groundwater left. So it's a green desert. I remember going through Utah and some of the, the dry deserts when I first came out west as a young woman and just being amazed that you could go all day on the train and see nothing but sand and bones. And it, that has its own beauty, but I love the Borrego particularly just because it does have groundwater so that there's tree forms and there are life forms. Everything in the desert claims its space. I like that the way, instead of being a jumble of forest and undergrowth, everything has its place and takes the space around it. I call this the memory series. My daughter used to complain that her teenage years were so full of angst and were so awful. So I painted her about a dozen paintings. Each one is a view of the interior of the house that she grew up in. And each one is colored bright colors. The walls actually were white. The floor was actually hardwood. But the message was you can color your memories any way you want them. <laughs> we should all keep that in mind that we can all color our memories, that we don't have to carry around the baggage of what a horrible childhood we all had. it interesting where the series started with blood on the pavement mm -hmm. and that it can end up with something as hopeful as that.